All right, welcome to Right On with John Crane. And last we saw each other, I was going over the history of Airstream, and I thought it was good to give some context to the background of this project. And that's an interesting history with Wally Byam, Holly Bullis, and if you haven't seen that video, you can go back. It's uh, right on number 80. You can go back and watch that video. And uh, some of you have also commented that there's been a little uh, lapse of time. There's been some time in between videos, and that's partly due to I was creating some infrastructure here for this project, getting organized for this project. Namely, I had to build a space, build out a shop space to house the Airstream, and I got it all in there. And I just got to say that any project like this, organization is key, right? You got a nice sense of control. You know where to go. You got materials ready. You got a space ready. Everybody knows that feeling. You go to reach for, you know, that half inch socket or wrench and it's not there. And it takes you, you know, a half hour to find it or you got to go buy a new one. It's just really nice having things organized. And, uh, all of you guys know those shop spaces where maybe you go into a person's shop space and it looks like a, you know, a hurricane went off 30 years ago and nobody ever cleaned up. And, you know, that's not always the place that I want to take a project. I like to have things nice, neat and organized, efficient. I definitely do not like that feeling of having one foot on a banana peel and the other on thin ice. It's nice to have a nice, solid foundation to stand on. Anyhow. Let's get into this Airstream project, right? This project is a 1959 Airstream Safari trailer. And this is an awesome project that I'm doing in collaboration with Blackmouth Design. And this thing is just gonna turn out wonderful. We're gonna uh, redo this trailer from head to toe. So stay tuned through this whole series. There's gonna be a lot going on in the series on the Airstream. I'm gonna show you how to restore an Airstream trailer or how I'm going to restore it. So stay tuned. There's going to be lots of tools, lots of techniques, and uh, just a really interesting project. All right, right on. Let's head up to the top shop. All right, folks, welcome to Airstream Central and welcome to the new shop space. And in saying new shop space, it's not necessarily a new space. This was a carport that I had and I was storing a lot of material in here, lumber, and I moved all that out of here to create a space to work on this Airstream trailer. So I was gonna work on this thing outside and I was like, ah, this really needs to be in a covered space. So this is the shop space that I've created. Uh, this didn't have any siding on it in here. So I added some siding, I added some insulation and uh, let me show you around the space. All right, this is a metal pole barn type structure, six by six posts, trusses, metal roof. This is some of the metal siding that I added over here. And uh, I insulated this with some rock wool comfort board. And this is a pretty neat insulation. This is pretty stiff, rigid stuff. This is comfort board 80, it's three inches thick. And my plan is to eventually put some plywood over the top of this, but just for now, I put the comfort board up and I will cover this with plywood at a later time. But here is the shop space. I have this bench over here. I did have that bench over here and I moved it to this side and I set up all the stuff here that I'm getting ready to work on this Airstream project. I got all the polishing stuff, the strippers, all the, uh, all the goods over here. But this is going to be a great space to work on this Airstream. And uh, there she is right there. And let's back her on in. at this vintage Airstream and it may look rough right now, right? We're held together with some strings here to keep the door closed, but that's where I come in, right? I'm gonna transform this Airstream into a beautifully polished, amazing ride. Uh, 
So looking at this Airstream, there is no tags on this, but my research shows that this is most likely a 1959 either Safari or Flying Cloud. Now, it's a 22-foot Airstream trailer, right? And in those days, in the 50s and 60s, the Safari and the Flying Cloud, they were both 22-foot trailers. And the only difference is with the name, either Safari or Flying Cloud, it's just the layout inside. The shell and everything was the same, but Airstream, it was great. They enabled you to customize your Airstream to order. So if you wanted a specific set of windows, whether you wanted a row of windows, you wanted this louvered window here, or you wanted a tall window, you could get this in so many different configurations. So it's hard, you know, to pin down an exact Airstream, but my research is showing a 1959, maybe 58, either Safari or Flying Cloud. All right, let's take a closer look. All right, so obviously someone has put some paint on here. I'm gonna strip off all the paint, but let's uh, take a closer look. All right, first off, it's a single axle. Looks like uh, somebody in the back here made some custom boxes here out of aluminum. And we've got a mount here for the spare tire. We got the classic Airstream emblem here above the window. And as you can see, this is a seven panel design here on the top. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven with the rivets going over the top. Here's the, uh, the old classic tail lights, California plates. You can see we got some dings and dents here. I'm gonna have to work those out with a, you know, maybe the planishing hammer, some auto body hammers there. And uh, let's look down the side. You can see the kind of room here I got to operate. It's actually pretty good. I got about three feet between, I put this little bench here and the trailer. You know, we got some grills, you know, different things where, uh, you know, appliances were located inside the trailer, whether it be a stove or refrigerator, right? Access here. Somebody's got the uh, the old antenna up on the top, whether that's, uh, you know, maybe that's an FM there. Right, we're gonna replace all these lights. Here's the front, the hitch, obviously looks in kind of crazy shape. The propane tank holder, we're gonna straighten all of this out. Somebody's got another little custom box here. Now I know these came with a box right here on the front. So maybe we'll have to recreate that. Here's the front window. It's got a little protection panel over the front. Now I forget this. I think this was originally bent down and this held some sort of pole or antenna. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to look uh, deeper into that. You know, here's some power outlets. You know, we're gonna take all these little old patches off and uh, really fix this up. And here's a profile shot from the end. And let's go around and I'll show you the, the inside. All right, let's take a look inside. We'll open the door here. All right, welcome to your new home. Your home on wheels and holy McElhaney. <laughs> all right, now this is great. This is great that this is all gutted. The plan is to remove uh, the trailer here, take this out from underneath the shell. We're gonna lift this shell up and then I'm gonna sandblast the shell here, do some welding, fix it up, get it back in tip top shape. All right, so take a good hard look at this trailer right now because we are in store for an amazing transformation that's gonna occur on this trailer. And I know how well these can turn out and some of you Airstream guys out there know that too, that this is just gonna be an amazing trailer the aluminum on this is top grade aluminum. Uh, it's gonna polish up beautifully and uh, we're gonna bring this to a mirror finish. So, all right, it's time to get to work. I'm gonna cut the trailer loose of the shell. We're gonna lift this shell up and uh, that's the project here. All right, right on.
All right, first things first, I'm gonna take this door off and then I'm gonna start looking at how I can separate the shell from the trailer itself. I'll go around the perimeter and start taking pieces off and see where the break point is there on removing the shell. But let's get this door off. I'm gonna be going in and out of this door quite a bit. So, chap, chap. here got the holes in it for the uh, lock wire there the safety wire all right to get this trim piece off here that wraps around the back looks like I'm gonna have to take these little utility boxes here off and it looks like somebody really went to town here and uh, I don't have the best lighting but there is a lot of bolts and it looks like they're tapped into this steel bumper so I'm gonna see if I can break those free and then pop these off <laughs> See now, that is not an aluminum box on the back there. That looks to me to be a magnesium box. All right, well that was pretty wild. I was grinding in here on some of the bolt heads to cut them off and I had come through here with the saw that created some chips from this box. And then I go in there with the grinder to cut off one of the bolt heads and this whole box goes up in flames. And then I realize you know, I took some of the chips from this. I went over to the bench and I lit them on fire. But this is some magnesium metal there. Uh, you know, once this stuff catches fire, it's really hard to put out. So. I remember the old Volkswagen Beetle engines were made. They had a magnesium engine block and occasionally those would catch on fire. I remember my neighbor in New Jersey had a Beetle and I drove past them on the highway there and I could see he had the hood up and that thing was on fire fire department was around the car, but they weren't able to put it out. They were just waiting for it to burn out. All right, finally got these two boxes off of the back. What a pain in the neck that was. But now I got this, I got all the trim off. And here's this uh, separating line, this seam here that joins the body here to the underside. And you can see, I don't know, it looks like maybe there was some patching or something going on here. Uh, putting some aluminum on the underside. And then here's some riveting. All right, now the trick is to just come in with a sharp drill bit and drill these aluminum rivets out. Uh, a lot of these actually have a little indent right in the center, so you can uh, go right in that little indent and just drill this right out. All right, let's pop that into the recycle bucket. All right, and uh, only a thousand more to go. All right, before I go any further taking out these rivets around the perimeter, what I've done here now is I've set up a type of scaffolding system. I put up these little knee braces, and I don't know if you can see here, there's some glare in the light. I got a uh, plank, a deck there, 
uh, going across the top. Get a better view here on this side. So I got this 16 foot plank and this is going right across the top. And this is gonna be great for working on the top of the Airstream. But what I'm thinking right now is I'm pulling these rivets out and I, what I wanna do is I wanna lift this shell off of the chassis. So what I'm figuring out right now is I got this laser set up. I got this shooting right through the skylight. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a little uh, two by four frame here, kind of like a, a big H or that type of thing. And I'm gonna pick it up with a come along through each of these skylights. So I got the laser shooting right now onto the ceiling. I got the crosshairs up there. I'm gonna bolt a board up there, connect the come along to that one there, one on the other side over there, and then I'll lift this whole shell. All right, this is pretty deluxe. What I have here is two come-alongs. I got one set up on either side. And this one here, I got to attach to the six by six post. We're running up here and I got a block there with the cable running through, dropping right down. And I built this two by six frame. And this frame is great. It spans the length of the trailer and I'm hitting every one of these ribs with that. So the lift that I have on here, right? It's gonna span to each one of these horseshoe shaped ribs that runs up and over. So okay, and just a note about drilling these rivets. Some of these are Olympic rivets. Some of them are solid rivets. Some repair has been done here along the bottom in some spots and some Olympic rivets were used, but for these rivets, I like to come in with a center punch. And sometimes it's nice to come in with a small, coming in with an eighth inch bit. And then I'm gonna replace these with three sixteenths inch rivets. So I'm using a number 11 drill bit. You gotta use the correct size. So if you go through, you're drilling the right size hole for that rivet. And you can kind of steer the rivet or steer the drill bit around as you're going into the rivet. Right, and the head just pops off like that and loosens up. I am here in the belly of the beast and I am breaking free the outer shell. And you can see the bottom underside, the under skin here. It comes up and it's sandwiched between this piece of C channel and the outside skin. So I'm breaking that free inside. <laughs> All right, folks, the time has come. The time is now. Robert K. Mooney, let's see what goes down. I've separated all the sheet metal here around the bottom, and I'm about to lift this Airstream up off the chassis. I got the two come-alongs up above here. So you can see I got the one come-along running up, the other one running up as I was showing earlier. I don't wanna be picking up on that with the come along and be picking up any weight of the chassis. I just wanna pick up the shell of this and this should be fairly lightweight. This is just some aluminum and I think we should be just fine. I know it's uh, from watching those old factory videos and watching those guys, uh, two guys being able to pick up a whole shell that uh, these shells are pretty lightweight. I know we got some glass in here too and that type of thing, but this should be pretty lightweight.
right, well, I gotta say that couldn't have worked out any better. That shell lifted right off, and now I'm able to pull this trailer out from underneath the shell. That was awesome, that was great. This frame, it's hitting all the ribs up there, perfect. All right, I'm real happy with the way that worked out. Got the neighbor running the chainsaw over there. And this is great. Got the shell suspended. Was able to pull that out and the uh, spare tire mount snuck right under the back here. That was great being able to lift this up that high. All right, so next step now is to get busy on the chassis here of the trailer. trailer. Rip off all this aluminum. Then we're gonna sandblast this frame, do some welding on this, and get this all dialed in. from up above on this scaffolding here. So I'm locating center on this and we'll put this plate right here. All right, so here we got the, the mount, the pivot here for the hitch end. Drop this on here and today I'm working with my friend Tahoe. Tahoe's uh, an employee over at Blackmouth Design and he's over at the Crane Machine Shop today working yeah. with me. And uh, soon we're gonna pivot this trailer as you all see here soon. That's why uh, we got the scaffolding set up. Mm -hmm. Tahoe's been erecting uh, this erector set. We're gonna drop down with a couple chain hoists, lift this up and hopefully pivot this whole trailer. <laughs> That's gonna be pretty cool. All right, I just wanna loosen up these lug nuts. So when I lift this off the ground, I can easily pop these tires off. All right, here we are. We got the setup. Me and Tahoe have been working hard. We got the framework. And we got the uh, we got the Dan Blyde chain hoist. This is coming out of New Jersey. Dan Blyde sent this chain hoist out and we got this all set up on this end of the trailer. And then down here, I'm gonna operate that one. Tahoe is gonna operate this chain hoist here. 
and we got a loop. So we'll be able to pick this up. Thinking that we're gonna get the pivot point up to about four and a half feet. That's the spread on the trailer, half the, uh, half the width of the trailer. All right, we'll lift that up and then be able to pivot the trailer, spin it. All right, how you feeling, Taha? It's gonna be fun. All right, here we go. Here's the contraption, ancient Egypt. All right, that was awesome. Everything worked out just as planned. These fixtures that I welded up to pivot this worked great with the chain hoist. And now I'll be able to spin this actually quite a few times. Now that I have it upside down, I'll be able to strip off all the aluminum, be able to cut these rivets, take off everything on the underside. I got the lug nuts loosened up, be able to pop these wheels off. The step here is gonna need some work. And then I'll be able to sandblast this, do some welding on it, flip this over, you know, sandblast the other side, attach some plywood flooring, flip it over again, insulate the bottom, and then stretch some new aluminum over the whole bottom, flip it back over again, drive it back up to the other shop, and put the shell right back down on it. And then, uh, Lots more to do. So stay tuned. So next time uh, I see you here, we'll be sandblasting and doing some welding and cleaning this all up. All right, right on. Mm -hmm.